Hey, all of you guys on Daily Bread, thank you guys again. Uh, I pray that you've been thinking all week about your dynamic and spectacular partnering with us. Uh, we're believing for 1,680 more people, a, a, a mighty promise from God, double for our trouble. And we believe it, guess what, all of you and more and more and more will be a part of that, a uh, fulfillment of that uh, spectacular promise from Almighty God. It is miraculous the way God gives things and causes us to stretch ourselves to believe for things that are impossible for us to do within our own control, but not with him because he's almighty God. So God bless you and thank you this morning uh, for your continued uh, working, laboring with us in the word of God and helping other people for this. It's a, it's a great thing to tell somebody about Jesus, all right? Because he's great, all right? Now, we come back to uh, 1 Samuel this morning. Uh, this is our fourth lesson in this particular uh, understanding of scripture, revelation of scripture of that, the seeds that we sow every day, uh, the monies that you feed a person uh, with the, the clothing that you buy for people to help people to be clothed. Everything that we do, all these good things, these good things that come out of uh, the greater one that's on the inside of us, there are certain amounts of seeds, uh, even uh, amounts, and I would look at them as gifts that we give God, uh, that God can take that particular gift and do so much with it that it can just go like boom to the person who was first involved in hearing, you know, and in, in hearing from God. That's the point. Remember what's, remember Ananias? He was in a place to hear from God, all right? That means that he had to have himself, not everybody else, and he wasn't in a group when God talked to him, all right? He was within himself. He could hear because he spent time with the Lord. He was in God's you know, not God's presence per se, you know, like I'm seeking the Lord. No, he was just living for God. And because he was a living vessel of God in the house of God, God could go pick his vessel up off the shelf and say, you know something, I'm going to use this vessel today for this. That's the way we are. That's what Paul talked about, you know, when he wrote about the vessels in God's house. So we have to be that vessel every day so that the hand of God can come to us, pick us up, move us, show us, give us direction, and then give us a word that we can now deliver to someone else from the hand of God, okay? Now, Samuel comes by way of, of Hannah, his mother, who prayed when she didn't have a child. Isn't that a spectacular moment to come before the Lord when you know it's impossible for something that you desire, but you know it's possible for him because of who he is? Got to see him big. Got to see him great. Got to see him, you know, high and lifted up, as, as Isaiah said. You got to see him like that, okay? You got to see him the, the fourth person in the fire, all right? When one king has said one thing, that this is what's going to happen to those who say they're going to serve that king. And then the real king shows up and tells the other king, listen, this is the way it is with me and my servants, and you can't harm them. But the only thing you can do for me is to give them a promotion. See, this is the way that the Lord works in our lives. But we've got to be able to be the person who can hear, the person who can whatever. And look what happened to Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego. They came out and got promoted to do all kinds of things. Now, you know they promoted Jesus Christ through the kingdom during our lifetime because of what the Lord had did with them. All right, again, everything comes back to how many apples are in it, how many seeds in that apple? But how many apples are in those seeds? All right, and God is the only one that knows that and can do that with those, with those particular gifts. We look at Samuel. Hannah has had this young man. She weaned him. She would not carry him up. Through the feast, she was just saying, Lord, I'm preparing him for you. When I give him to you, he's all yours. He's going to be with you forever. He's going to be in the tabernacle forever. He's going to be in your presence forever. This is what she meant. This was not a visitation, go and come back. She was saying, no, nope, give me the son. He's going to be with you. He's going to tabernacle with you. All of his life, you're going to tabernacle with him all of his life. And this is what God did with him. This is why Samuel did so many things, okay? And it says, when Samuel was growing, now listen to this, we're in chapter 3 now, all right? It says that it came to pass, you know, when there was no vision, that means God wasn't speaking to anybody about anything that the Lord wanted, okay? This is chapter 3. And it says, there was no vision, no open vision in those days. And it says, uh, verse 4, that the Lord called unto Samuel, and he answered and said, here I am. Now, he thought it was Eli. <laughs> he got up. He went in there and said, okay, because he's, guess what? You got to learn. You got to learn to hear, okay? And he's a young boy, and he's learning from his time when he's a young boy, okay? And he goes in, he runs into Eli. Eli said, yeah, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. You're waking me up now, you know? 
And you know, you guys know how it is when you get a little older and somebody wake you up out of your nap. You go like, yeah, call me, leave me alone. I got, you know, you're going to get your nap. And says the Lord called him a couple of times. And then Eli finally recognized that it was the Lord calling Sam. And he said, listen, next time he called you, just say, Lord, here I am. I'm your servant, you know, whatever. And it says this. And it says the Lord called again the third time. And uh, he rose and went to Eli. And that's when Eli found out. Eli said this. And then verse 10, here we go. This is going to get you. The Lord came and stood. All right. The Lord came and stood and called as at other times. All right. Now this time he's standing there. Other times he called him. But this time he understands now that the boy has an understanding of who's calling him. Okay. So now he comes and he stands by him. That is very intimate. Okay. He stands by him and he says this. Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel answered and said, speak for thy servant hears. So he's following the, obe the obedience, the instructions that was given to him so that he could talk to God. Okay, remember how obedient Ananias was when he said, no, nah, I ain't going over there, Saul. You know, he's got orders to kill people, take them to jail. And the Lord said, no, 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 he's called for this. And so guess what? He didn't argue with the Lord. He was obedient to what the Lord said. This young man was obedient to what his mentor said to him, okay? You got to remember something. Your future depends on the people that you listen to. All right? I can tell you that. Your future depends on, okay, who you listen to. The decisions that you go make in your future are going to depend on who you listen to right now. And it says, uh, he says, speak for thy servant hears. And he says, and the Lord said unto him, to Samuel, behold, I will do this thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that hear should tingle. <laughs> this boy begins to hear God talking, you know, and, and the Lord, he's telling him what he's going to do to Eli's house, and the Lord did exactly what he said he's going to do. And I'm telling you, he's still doing what he said he's going to do. But look at what this young man became, all right? He became the one, all right? Now, again, from the mother who was barren, comes a son who becomes the hand of God who anoints the first king of Israel. Who anoints the first king. He was the one, you can read it over in chapter, in chapter 9, who met Saul and, and the Lord said, this is the one I was telling you about. This is the one I want you to do. He became, from a barren woman, he became the child to anoint the first king of Israel which God was beginning now to bring kingdom knowledge into the whole world. Kingdom knowledge into the whole world. And so, again, how many seeds are in an apple? Everybody can count them. All right? Even a little child can open them up and count the seeds and put them on. But how many apples? I know seeds. And how many apples are there in you? from that seed that someone planted many years ago? This is the question that I'm just bringing to everybody because we live in days where God needs everybody to become who God wants them to become, to participate in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ so that that presentation can reach men and women that are sitting in darkness and in disappointment. God bless you. we see you here tomorrow morning on Daily Bread. Amen.